Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a dark comedy film, Collective Invention. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a tape recording of Park awkwardly introducing himself. The narrator states that Park is a man who came out of nowhere and pushed their society into chaos. It's because he is a human mutant that turned into a fishman. The scene cuts to Park being escorted out of a building and bombarded by countless reporters. The narrator says that it's been five years since Park was last seen and there's still so much they don't know about him. A newspaper debates whether or not Park is a revolutionary evolution or a scientific curse. The narrator continues by saying that Park became a sensational phenomenon in their country. Society was torn between accepting him for who he is and even going as far as worshipping him and seeing Park as their idol, but others doubt and hate him because they think Park is a con man or the devil. The narrative ends, and in the next scene, we find out that the narrator is San, a journalist who is in the middle of editing the documentary of Park's story. He gets scolded by a senior for slacking off on his duties. He advises Sang to stop his obsession with Park because no one else except him cares about the fishman anymore. Later on, Sang gets visited by Cutie, a girl who he hasn't seen in a while. They talk about the status of Park's documentary. Cutie gives Sang an envelope before going away. He opens it up, but before the content can be seen, he starts recalling the moment he met Park five years ago. Sang was a wanted reporter at that time, who wishes to represent the people and uncover the truth and the injustices in society. He applies for a job, but is instructed to land an interview with someone before he gets accepted. An account on the internet handled by a strange girl, who claims her boyfriend turned into a fish, is the person the company is after. Sang is tasked to find out why she's making up stuff online. He soon visits her house to interview her. When the door opens, it is revealed that the strange girl is Cutie. The scene shifts to a dark rainy night, and Cutie opens up the door to Park. Park explains to her that he agreed to a clinical trial because of the large payment for taking pills. However, he starts feeling unusual after a day into the experiment at Gammy Medical. Weird tests were done on him, but Park managed to escape and went straight to Cutie's to hide because his place isn't safe anymore. She dials the said hospital to report his whereabouts, while Park is in her room, anxiously asking Cutie about the label of their relationship, unaware of her schemes. The scene switches back to Sang finally interviewing Cutie. She confidently tells him that she sold Park because they are in a capitalistic society and he's not her boyfriend. Sang gets confused about the gossip Cutie tells him about her life and asks how Park turned into a fish in disbelief. Cutie gets annoyed and asks him to follow her to see the fishman for himself. They pretend to deliver food to Gammy Medical and search for Park there. Cutie triggers the fire sprinklers so they can enter the research development facility where Cutie believes Park is being kept. Just when Sang is nervously telling them to leave the place, they get caught by the guard. Cutie discovers Park strapped on the opposite side of the curtains. Sang is shocked by what he sees while Cutie records everything, showing proof that Park is now a fishman. Park's story, along with Gammy Medical's unethical experiments, is later exclusively aired on the news company that Sang applied to. He receives a temporary spot as a reporter, but gets word that he'll become full-time soon. Sang gets instructed once again to know everything about Park, who is currently staying at his house. He begins to pretend that he's not a reporter affiliated with the company. Sang starts the documentary with Park's personal information and background from when he was a kid until he became an adult. Park is portrayed as a normal guy who was easily forgotten by his peers and found it difficult to land a career after graduating. The scene then shifts back to the beginning of the film, where Park awkwardly introduces himself in front of the camera. He timidly apologizes when Sang is stunned to know Park agreed to the clinical trial without reading the fine print of the contract. Park's father abruptly enters the house and beats Park angrily. Sang gets intimidated by Park's father when he gets a threat from him. Cutie almost gets into a fight with Park's father because he meddles in her life decisions, but Sang intervenes. Sang resumes editing the documentary, showing a clip of Dr. Crazy, the head scientist of the project Park was involved in, along with other doctors from Gammy Medical, who expressed their sincerest apologies for the clinical trials they had conducted in a press conference. The objective of the conference shifts when the attention of the reporters is caught by the possibilities of ending world hunger and prolonging human life can be achieved with their experiments, even going as far as saying it's worthy of a Nobel Prize that can be received by Korea. Sang narrates that he's unable to meet Dr. Crazy for an interview due to his declining requests. Later, Sang and Cutie are in the car, secretly waiting for Dr. Crazy. Cutie questions Sang if he knew that she doesn't like Park. He responds that he does know and tells her not to hurt Park because he's already pitiful. 
Cutie asks Sang if he thinks Park is lonely, because he is neither a man nor a fish. She tells him Park is just like her, someone who is struggling to decide who exactly they are and their purpose, not belonging in one place. Just then, Dr. Crazy arrives. Sang reminds Cutie not to get violent and annoyingly agrees to her demands for her payment cut so she can finally cooperate with interrogating the doctor. They corner Dr. Crazy, but he successfully runs away. Both of them try to catch up with him, but Cutie accidentally gets hit by a car. Dr. Crazy manages to get away. After that, Sang narrates again about how life goes on, but the public's infatuation with Park never stops. Park is constantly harassed in public by people who don't care about his privacy. Several news reports about Gammy Medical are made discussing their unethical practices. News coverage is also made about people like Park who desperately cling to jobs that may risk their lives and rights because of poverty and little income. According to Sang, Park became a symbol for youths who are filled with despair, which made their obsession with him become more extreme. As a result, Park became the center of everyone's lives. He became the reflection of everyone's problems in society, such as the unemployment rate in their country. The group is then seen exiting from a court trial, reporters flocking around them as usual. The verdict released was that Dr. Crazy got a four-year sentence and Gammy Medical received a nine-month suspension. An attorney is then introduced. He is known for his human rights movement and volunteered to work on Park's case pro bono. The attorney believes that they will win when Gammy Medical appeals. Later that day, all of them are in the attorney's office, preparing for their approach to the trial. He tells them that public perception is the most important at the moment because everything will now become a media battle. He advises Park to have a happy disposition and asks him to practice his smile. Park struggles with the instructions and just ends up being funny. The attorney diverts the topic and advises Park again to wear gloves to hide his wet hands. He disappointingly adds that Park's face can't be helped. Park's father tries to ask about the compensation they'll receive after the trial, and this angers Cutie. This creates another tension between them, and they argue in the office as Sang records them. After the fiasco, the following scene displays the fast development of Park into a fishman. The qualities that make him human are slowly disappearing, and no professionals know how to stop it. Many have offered to cure him and look for the solution, but give up in the end. This makes the group exhausted. They go to a worship session someplace, as they receive an offer to help Park. However, the pastor is a perverted bastard who sees Park with an evil spirit inside him and needs cleansing, hitting him several times in the head. They get enraged. Park's father punches the pastor, and this halts the cleansing session. Later that night, the group is all in a car, and wounds are evident on their faces from the fight that just ensued. But when Park's father comments that Park shouldn't have involved himself with a bimbo like Cutie, another argument goes down between the two. He tells her that she's just an opportunist who's using Park's media attention to become a celebrity. She retaliates by telling everyone that Park's father is greedy because he doesn't care about Park at all and only cares about how much money he can pocket. He drags Cutie outside the car and the other two follow after to calm them down, while Park is still sitting in the car and just stares at them. They argue more about the status of QB and Park's relationship. Cutie tells Park to get out of the car because everyone with them doesn't care about him. Park's father threatens him that if he gets out, he won't see him ever again. When Park doesn't move from his spot, this saddens and angers Cutie. Park's father stubbornly tells them that he won't drive with her in the car, so they are forced to leave Cutie on the road alone. After that day, articles defending Dr. Crazy resurface. People begin to assert the importance of Dr. Crazy's work and attack Park's supporters with baseless statements. Dr. Crazy is seen as a guest on news coverage to explain his work and display it for the whole world to see. When the reporter asks him about Park, the doctor undermines the horrific mutation that affected Park's life due to their trials by saying that Park was the only one who exhibited that kind of reaction to their experiments from the thousands of volunteers. He also emphasizes the quick development of other countries in replicating the trials that Gammy Medical is doing while they are in the middle of a lawsuit to invoke a sense of competitiveness from the public and to appease them. While all this is happening on set, Sang is there as well. He gets called by his senior and is commanded to give up on the documentary and he doesn't need to pretend anymore. A huge blow on their side appears when photo evidence of Park's perverted behavior is acquired and shown to the media in a press conference. On the other hand, Park and the others are all together watching this. The media then soon portrays Park as a sexual molester. The attorney is frustrated about the predicament they're in. He relays the information that Gammy Medical was bought by a big shareholder so as to capitalize on the money that Dr. Crazy will be able to make once they invest in him. The attorney scolds Park and tells him to take things seriously. As Sang and Park are left in the office, Sang receives a text from his senior that he'll get fired if he's still with the group. 
Part then tells Sang that he didn't jerk off to the nurse, and in turn, didn't commit any indecency to anyone. News starts to appear, showing people supporting Dr. Crazy and pharmaceutical companies and their cause, creating a major imbalance in how the appeal ends. The verdict then states that Gammy Medical is not guilty, and Park must continue with the experiments. Park is suddenly harassed by an old woman, who shouts that he's a pro-North Korean. The movie now returns to the present time. A domino effect which in the end caused riots, fights, and aggression from everyone. One side sympathizes with Park, and the other side supports the goal Dr. Crazy wants to achieve. One day, Sang gets handed a note made by Park, telling him that he's sorry and he'll just disappear. This shocks Sang, and he proceeds to search for him. He gets into a heated conversation on the phone with his senior. His senior reminds him that they'll be ruined if anyone finds out about Sang's affiliation with the news company. He promises Sang a full-time position if he returns immediately. Sang searches with Park's father, but they can't figure out where Park's hiding. Later that night, Sang watches several videos he's recorded of Park along with Cutie. He questions himself if he ever really knew who Park was. He packs up his things and returns to the news company. He gets bombarded by citizens, who manage to find out he is a reporter in disguise in Park's group. He gets attacked, and they acquire the tapes he's filmed about Park. Sang is stumped about everything that transpired. He soon goes home, and is worried someone broke in when he sees drops of blood on the floor. It leads to the bathroom, and Sang is shocked to see Park having a bath in the tub. He patches up Park's wounds, and asks him what happened. Park tells him that he has nowhere to go. He meekly tells about how middle school kids beat him up when they recognized him. Park asks him for a favor, and that is to film him saying he wants to visit the ocean again, after only seeing it one time when he was in high school. Park asks him what his dream is, but Sang can't give a definite answer. Park tells him that his dream is to be just a normal person and live a normal life. Sang finally says that he dreams of being a reporter. Park insists he sleeps in the tub because it's more comfortable now for him there, rather than the bed. With a newfound determination to help Park, Sang goes to the attorney, but sees him with a new client, who is Dr. Crazy. He goes home to see Park hanging in the living room. This scares him, and he rushes quickly to save Park. He sobs, and tells Park he shouldn't end his life like this. The following scene shows Park's father walking on the hospital corridors towards Sang. Fortunately, it wasn't life-threatening. Park had hung his gills, instead of his neck. The attorney arrives and confronts Sang about him being a mole, while Sang argues that he saw the attorney cooperate with Dr. Crazy. The attorney tells Park's father that they will never win the case. Park's father asks how much they are willing to pay them and whether it will be enough for Park to live normally. Meanwhile, Park hears everything from the opposite door and finally asks them to stop. Meanwhile, Cutie returns to her house. She is startled when she notices Park waiting for her there. He sees that she's preparing to take the civil exams. Park apologizes to Cutie and is about to go away when he's stopped by her. Eaten by her guilt, she admits all her wrongdoings towards Park, as well as her flaws. He gives her some money and goes away. Park goes back to Gammy Medical and continues with the experimentation even when it hurts him. One of the doctors gives him the wrong dosage, and Park has a seizure. The medicine became successful, but due to the shareholder's power, the price was expensive, and this made it hard for Dr. Crazy's vision to come true. Not long later, Park passes away. Sang attends the funeral and, for the first time, sees Park's face. He breaks down on the road and is guilty of how he used Park for his work. Sang visits the ocean with Cutie to pay respects to him. After that, the attorney exposes Dr. Crazy as a swindler because he had the means to turn Park back into a human, but he didn't do it. This got the doctor a seven-year sentence. The attorney soon becomes a politician, and rumors say that he is being bribed by the shareholder. Park's father dedicates his retirement to doing volunteer work. Meanwhile, Cutie became a typical civil servant. Sang becomes a full-time reporter, but not like what he expected to be at the start. Sang visits Dr. Crazy in prison, and it is revealed that the content in the envelope Cutie gave him was evidence of Park alive. Dr. Crazy tells Sang that Park knew in the end that there was treatment, but he chose to live as a fishman. So they faked Park's death and helped him escape to the ocean the same day Cutie and Sang were there. Park told Dr. Crazy to tell Sang everything if he asked, because uncovering the truth is what a real reporter does. Sang cries as he goes home that day, probably in relief to know that Park is still alive. Later that night, Sang meets up with Cutie, and she gives him a tape. He watches it by himself, only to figure out that Park is seen in the background swimming. He happily announces to his senior that he quits smoking and grabs a camera, planning to go to where Park is, and meet up with him after so long. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.